Hey everyone, uh, in today's lesson, we're gonna investigate how um, lines and planes can intersect in R3. So let's get started. So in grade 10, you guys solved linear systems involving two lines and determined a point of intersection. And uh, we now know how to do this in R, we did this in R3 as well. We did that in our last lesson. So now we're going to, well now, we will know, go now. It's funny, the things you catch over time with your stuff. We will now extend this to lines and planes in R3. Um, so what are the possible intersections of a line and a plane? So case one, so you have some plane, you have some line. It's possible that the line pokes through the plane, intersects the plane at exactly one spot. That's our first case. Case one, there is one point of intersection. And I think most people can have an easy time um, visualizing that. Uh, case two, uh, what could happen is that the plane and line are parallel and there's like some distance between them. Um, in this case, there is no point of intersection. And the third case is when you have a plane and the line is actually contained within the plane. Um, in this case, I'll say there are many. I guess I could say there are infinitely many uh, solutions slash points of intersection. Say so anytime, anytime I say point of intersection, we could just inter interchange that with solution. Um, and if you think back to grade ten, this is this is just this is the same three cases you get when finding, trying to find the intersection between two lines in R2. There can either be one point of intersection. If they're parallel, there can be none. But if they're parallel and they're the same, um, in this case, not the same, but the line is actually within the plane, there can be infinitely many. So that's nice. The, the math today is just uh, stuff we're, we're already used to. And we're going to see that to find the intersection of a line in a plane, uh, it's actually not too bad mathematically. It's almost easier than some other stuff we've been doing. So um, we're going to investigate here. We have a vector equation of a line in R3 and the Cartesian or scalar equation of the plane. And the way we're, what we're going to do is we're going to sub in. We're going to take the parametric equations of the line. And we're going to sub it into uh, the scalar or Cartesian equation of the plane. Cartesian equation of the plane. And uh, yeah, you're going to see that you know by doing that, we're going to create an equation where the only variable is the parameter t. And so we can solve for t and then find a corresponding point. Uh, so let's try that with this one. So just um, off the side here, I'll write out my three parametric equations. Uh, so I have 2 plus t for y. y is equal to 2 plus 0 t, or just 2. And z is equal to 1 plus 5t. My plane is x plus y plus z minus 11 equals 0. So let's sub those in and watch what happens. We get this. We get 2 plus t uh, plus 2 plus 1 plus 5t minus 11 equals 0. And this is just a linear equation uh, in t. And we just have to solve for t. So uh, let's just do that. So we're going to have t plus 5t, that's 6t. Um, we're going to have um, 2, 2, 1, that's 5, minus 11, minus 6, equals 0. 
six t equals six, so t equals one. So that parameter t equals one corresponds to our, in this case, we do get a point of intersection. The point of intersection is the point on this line where t is equal to one. So let's find that out. t equals one, r equals uh, two to one, plus one times one zero five, And we get three, two, six. Three, two, six is the point of intersection between this line and this plane. Um, and this method works for any line and plane. Um, you can, for any line in R3, you can get the parametric equations. For any plane in R3, you can get the Cartesian equation. Take the parametric equations, sub them in, you solve the linear, resulting linear equation, and you get your um, parameter value. And the, the last step is just to actually find out what point that is. Because t equals 1 is a, isn't a point. we got to put that parameter into our vector equation for our line to figure out what that point is. Uh, so there's our first one. So in that case, when there is a point of intersection, you're going to get a value for t. So in this case 1, when there's one point of intersection, you're going to solve an equation. It's going to give you a value for t. So we want to look at what happens mathematically when it's the other two cases. So let's check this out. So here we have a line in a plane. Uh, it's definitely not obvious what's going on here. And I want to say too, when uh, when I say like investigate the intersection, it, that means like you know if there's an intersection, like find out what it is, right? So um, some of you guys might be able to just like shave off some steps here for, so what I mean by that is maybe you can recognize what the parametric equations are right away. Like the X parametric equation is one plus two T and then minus eight. And the parametric equation for Y is negative two plus T. And the equation for Z is three minus six T. So some of you guys might be able to say, to start off that right away. Um, a bit more going on here. So I'm going to use my distributive law first. 16 minus 8t plus 3 minus 6t equals 0. OK, 7 plus 16 um, plus 3 is 26. 14t minus 8t minus 6t. That's 0t, or just 0. So what we get is that 26 equals to 0. Now, uh, most of us, like, uh, alarm bells should be going off because 26 uh, definitely does not equal to 0. This statement is never true. Right? 26 is never equal to 0. Um, this means that there are no solutions. There is no point of intersection. In fact, the, um, this is case two, uh, where the plane and the line are parallel to each other. Um, so that's what happens in the second case. You're going to get something that's never true. You're, those t terms are going to go away, and you'll get something like 26 equals 0. And that's, that's OK. That doesn't mean you made a mistake um, necessarily. But here it means that there's no solutions. So that's what you can expect to happen if there's no solutions. And we're glad about that, right? If a line and plane are parallel and never meet, we don't want the math to tell us that they meet somewhere. We want the math to tell us that, hey, there's a problem here. They're not going to meet. So this is how it breaks down. Let's look at our third example. So we might expect it to be the third case. I don't actually know. It's been a year since I've done this problem. So let's uh, give it a go. Um, uh, I'm just going to show a bit of extra work for this one, just for, you know, in case you don't feel as comfortable plugging in right away, you can just like take your time and write out the parametric equations. 3 plus 2t, 4 plus 3t, um, and let's sub that in. So we get 2 plus t, minus 2, 3 plus 2t, and then plus 4 plus 3t equals zero. Um, so a bit going on, so I'll just apply my distributive law first. So minus six minus four t and then plus four 
plus 3t equals 0. So 2 take away 6 plus 4, that's 0. Yep. And then t minus 4t is negative 3t plus 3t, that's 0 as well. So what we get is actually everything divides it or everything cancels out. And we're left with 0 equals 0. Now this is different than before, right? This isn't giving you a specific value of t with one point of intersection, and but this statement's this statement's not it, it, it's this statement is true. This statement is always true. Zero equals zero is always true. In fact, this equation right here that holds no matter what value of t you plug in, which means no matter what value of t you plug in, the point you get on the line is also going to satisfy the plane. This is always true. There's, uh, we can say, maybe say infinite solutions. You could also say uh, the line is contained in the plane. So that's our third case. Um, and again, it's not a bad thing. You know, if the, if, if the line is in the plane, it would be really bad if our equation gave us, hey, t is some number, because that means that t is one number and then there's a single point of intersection. If there's infinitely many point of intersections, we want this equation to work for all values of t, and by canceling any getting 0 equals 0, that's the way it does that. So everything's good. That's how the math plays out in our three cases. So here's a little summary. Uh, if you get t equals to some number, that corresponds to one solution. That was our, our case one. If you get something like um, some number equals zero, and I, I, this is very loosely speaking, so this number is like not zero, uh, then you have no solutions. That's case two. The line and plane are parallel and separate. And then if you get a, if you get this when you're solving your equation, zero equals zero, that means that there's infinite solutions and it's case three. So hopefully you're convinced that the, the math isn't too bad, finding the intersection of a line and a plane. Pretty straightforward, parametric equations into the Cartesian equation and try to solve for t. And we've gone over the three cases of what can happen. All right, there's one more thing we wanna do. Uh, so in the case of a line and plane being parallel and kind of separate, we wanna ask ourselves, what is the, uh, the distance between a line. Uh, um, I should. This should say a line, actually. Um, you know what? We're okay here. So we'll do. Um, this is fine. Um, yeah, a point to a plane is fine. I'll just explain why in a second. So here's a plane. Let's say. And we have some line that's parallel. So why do I say? Why is it here? The distance from a point to a plane instead of a line to a plane? Well, it's actually the same thing because whether my, let's say um, my point P is here and the distance to the plane, is gonna be vertical like that. Uh, it'll be perpendicular and it'll be like along a normal to the plane. You know, if I pick a different point, because the plane, the line and plane are parallel, if I pick a different point, I'm gonna get the same distance, right? So it doesn't matter what point on the line you choose, you're gonna get the same distance between the line and the plane. So that's why we're saying, you know, how do you find the distance from a point to a plane? So if you want to find the distance from a point to a plane or a line from a plane, you just need a point on the line. So we'll start with point P. Um, this guy here, we'll let this be a normal to the plane. And let's let Q be any point that's on the, um, on the plane. Um, finding the distance from the point to the plane, it's along that normal. What we're going to do is we're going to project this vector PQ. We're going to just do one of our little vector projections, right? We're going to project that onto the normal, and that's going to give us that length we need, the distance from the point to the plane or the line to the plane. So how do we do this? So this distance, it's basically the same derivation as yesterday. It is the magnitude of the vector projection onto the normal of, of uh, vector PQ. 
and this is given by the size of, and we know how to do vector projections. Our formula was PQ dotted with N over N dotted with N times vector N. Uh, and if you're thinking, hey, this looks the same as the distance between two lines, it actually is very similar, except you know here P is a point on the line, Q is a point on the plane, but it's very, very similar. And uh, simplifying that a little bit, I'll show an extra step here just because I have the space. So we get PQ dot N on top, on the bottom, that's the size of N squared, and then times the magnitude of n, these divide out, and you're left with this. Actually, I'll put this down below. The distance from a point p to a plane is given by, the distance is the magnitude of the dot product pq with n over the magnitude of n. So here, n is the normal to the plane, p is the point, and q is any point on the plane. Any point will work. So it's often in your best interest to find an easy point. Um, so this also works for a line to remember. It's just, you know, for point P, you just got to pick a point on the line. All right, let's do an example here. Let's find the distance between the plane uh, 4x plus 2y plus z minus 6 and equals 0 in each point. All right, so the first thing we need is what are we going to use for Q, right? That formula needs a point on the plane. So you got to look at the equation and find a point. Now, there's infinitely many points that will work. So see, if I would always recommend choose an easy one. So I can myself see that if x was 0 and y was 0, then I just have to make z minus 16 equal to 0. And mentally, I can just do that easily. z would be 16. I can easily see that 0, 0, 16 is a point on the plane. Uh, you could also use like 4, 0, 0 or 0, 8, 0. Any point that's easy, or if you feel like making it harder, just any point will do, but that's a nice trick to get an easy one. Just make two of them zero, often gives you an easy way to do it. Um, so let's do our formula. Maybe I'll just actually quickly write out what PQ is equal to. Uh, the vector PQ, Q minus is negative 10, zero minus three, 16 minus negative eight is 24. All right, so D, it's the magnitude of PQ dotted with N over the size of N. And you know, at this point, it's just kind of calculations. So um, um, you can show as much work as you need to, really. So the size of, so um, maybe I'll just write my normal to, I'll write my normal here. It's four, two, one. So uh, I'll have negative 40 uh, minus six plus 24 all over the root of, um, 4 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared. And I'll get negative 46 plus 24. Um, that is, why am I having a hard time with that? Negative 22. Uh, and so the absolute value of that would be 22. And on the bottom, 16, 20, 21, 22 over root 21. And if you wanted to get an approximate decimal for that, that's fine too. Um, for some reason, I feel like I did that wrong. 24 minus 46. No, it's negative 22. Um, yeah, if you wanted to, if you wanted just to get an idea about you know what approximate that is, you could just do the division. I would just leave it exact. Uh, but it is that is about 4.8 units. But leaving it exact is good. <clears throat> so if you'd like to try uh, the next one, you can put, maybe pause the video and unpause when you've given it a go. Um, so uh, in this case, in this case, um, I'm going to use the same Q. And here you're going to have to find the vector of BQ. We're using point B instead of P. Um, so what do we get? 0 minus 2, 0 minus 2, 16 minus 4, that is 12. Um, and the normal is the same, same plane, 4, 2, 1. <clears throat> so here we go. D equals, uh, it'll be the magnitude of BQ dotted with N over the size of N. <clears throat> so the absolute value of, uh, so we get negative 8 
uh, minus 4 plus 12 all over the root of, we'll get the root of 21 again. But check this out. <clears throat> Negative 8 subtract 4 plus 12. That's equal to 0. We get 0 over root 21 or just 0. So can you think for a second about what that means? If you want to think longer, pause the video. What does it mean if the distance between the point and the plane is zero? <clears throat> what actually means this? <clears throat> it means that B is on the plane, right? If, if point B is on the plane, we actually, we expect to get a distance of zero. And you can actually check this out. And if you plug this point into the equation for the plane, two times two plus four minus 16, you get 8 plus 4 plus 4 minus 16 uh, equals 0, the right-hand side. And so, yeah, you, we've just kind of checked what B is on the plane. So, um, yeah, that's uh, what you would expect in the case of a point not being on the plane. You'll get some meaningful non-zero value. This is how far it is away from the plane. And if it's on the plane, you should get 0. And I want to remind you guys as well. Here we found the distance from a point to a plane. You could do this exact same thing to find the distance from a line to a plane just by picking some point on the line and repeating this process. All right, that's it for uh, this lesson, guys. Hope you enjoyed. I had fun shooting it. Now, I suggested doing every other question here. Um, <clears throat> I mean, you guys have had, you know, three months of learning independently at this point. So <clears throat> I'm sure you've got your own habit, whether you like to do everything or whether you just kind of go over and see what you, you know, skip things you think you're comfortable with. So it's the same thing. Like if you feel comfortable, just, you know, do every other one or do them all if you need to. Or if you feel you're good, like don't do any, like, you know, just make sure you take care of yourself. Um, hope you guys are well. Um, uh, have a great day and we'll see you soon.